Another way to look at the measures of spread in a data set is to observe how far observations deviate from a central value. In this video, we will show methods for finding the variance and standard deviation of a data set. To begin, we'll load the student statistics package, as well as define our data set. And for ease of notation, we're just going to call our data set x. And x is comprised of a sample of data we collected on the commuting distance to work for some of our developers. So to start, we, what we need is a central value, and in this case we're going to use the arithmetic mean. And this is often denoted by mu. So we'll call mu, and what mu is equal to is it's equal to the sum of all of the observations in our collection divided by the number of observations. So in this case, the mean is equal to 3. So now that we have the mean, we can start to find how far away each of the observations deviate from this mean. So we start to just plug in some numbers now. What we begin to see is if we start talking about the, the variability in terms of a total variance, if we were to talk about adding all these variances up, or these deviations up, what you'll find is that they start to cancel each other out very quickly. So here, we, if we added these two up, we'd have 0, and 0, and 0. And this is certainly something we don't want if we're trying to compute the total variability. So to get around this, we're going to talk about the total variability, or the total variance of our collection of data, as the square of deviations, such that the values are always going to be positive. So if we try to generalize this, I'm going to come down here and call total variance is going to be equal to and I'm going to use a sum, and we're going to sum this over all the values, so from 1 to 5. As we said before, we're going to sum values from our data set. Our data set is called x in this case, and we're going to be taking off the mean, mu, And then we're going to square that value in, ensure, in order to ensure that the value is positive. And what this formula is really telling us is that we find the deviation of each observation from the mean, that's the central term here, then we square it, and then we add up all of those sums of squares to get us the, the complete formulation for the total variance. So in this case, the total variance of our data set of all, of all the values is going to be equal to 10. Now if we divide this value by the number of observations, what we're actually going to be looking at is the average of the squared deviations, or what's referred to as the variance. But it's probably important at this point to note that what we're working with today is a sample of data rather than a full population of data. As we said at the beginning, we're working with just a small sample of the distances in commuting for some of our developers, not all the developers per se. So because we're working with a sample, we need to use a slightly different divisor to find the average. So usually we use n, in this case we're going to use n minus 1, and this corresponds to the degrees of freedom. So in this case, the variance is going to be equal to the total variance divided by n minus 1. So 4 in this case. So now we find that the variance in this case is going to be equal to 5 over 2. So the variance is the average of the squared uh, deviations. But what we're really interested in in this case is the average deviation for each term. So to find that, we're going to be looking for the standard deviation. And what the standard deviation is actually equal to is that it's the square root of the variance. So the square root of the variance, if we compute this, it's actually going to be square root of 5 over 2. So it's going to be 1 over 2 times root 10. So we've, we've now computed a few of these by hand. So now let's go back over, and I'm going to borrow our data set, move it over here. Let's do the same comp computations now using the student statistics context menus. 
So to begin with, we'll start. We'll show you from this from before. So we'll get on to student statistics, quantities, and we'll calculate first the mean, just so we know what the, the mean is. Then we can go and we can find a couple of other quantities here. So we'll right click, choose quantities, find the variance. Right click again, student statistics, quantities, standard deviation, and the value. Now, of course, we can find all these uh, numerically, but potentially another even better way of visualizing this would be through a plot. So if we go up to our data, right click and choose student statistics, we can view this in a data summary format. So here we'll choose data summary, we'll choose plot. And now we get the plot, we can now see the mean. We can also see the mean minus the standard deviation, as well as min and max values all shown here on this data summary plot. 